I think this is going to be a good year for Bitcoin. I think we started out the year with the ETF approval, and that was a big milestone. I think that the success of the ETF is another uh, another milestone. Uh, I think that the having in April will be a third positive milestone. I think those three things are going to drive momentum, and I think I think all the marketing wars between the Wall Street firms is is uh, is going to be positive, and I think that. I think the assets being normalized throughout the mainstream investment community. And so I think it was keep generating momentum from here. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. In today's video, Michael Saylor shares his new prediction for Bitcoin in the next 10 years and why Saylor thinks that the best time to buy more Bitcoin is now. So without wasting any time, let's dive into the video. I think that we're living through the Bitcoin gold rush era. And I think the Bitcoin gold rush era started January 2024. And I think it runs until around November 2034. So it's about 10 years. And I'll tell you why. Because 93.5% or so of the Bitcoin was mined at the beginning of this period. But in November of 2034, 99% of all the Bitcoin that will ever be issued will have been issued. And so that that having is is uh, very symbolic. People talk about Bitcoin, you know, issuance coming out over the next hundred years, all the way till twenty one forty. But the truth of the matter is, the last hundred years, you're only getting one percent. So I think, and and actually, of that one percent, ninety basis points of it is coming in the in the twelve years that follow twenty thirty four, and then it's ten basis points, a tenth of a percent. But but practically speaking, all of the block rewards are de minimis starting in 2034. It's it's you know one percent over 100 years may as well be nothing because you know the daily volatility and the daily trading volume is going to render that to be somewhere between third order, fourth order, fifth order of magnitude. Um. So that being the case, really, um, this 10 years is your best chance to get Bitcoin. Right, this is the gold rush because this is the period where there's still a lot of FUD. There's still a lot of uncertainty. Uh, people still aren't sure. They don't understand digital energy. They don't understand digital capital. They don't understand digital property. There's a lot of debate in the community. Is Bitcoin a currency or is it a property? Or you know, there, There's massive debate. A lot of people say, well, it's a currency and since it's not legal tender or because it doesn't move fast enough, or I can't buy coffee with it, it's not a good currency. So there's a lot of confusion in the crypto community. Um, there's a lot of mainstream regulators, they think it's currency. So you see bankers say, oh, it's a currency, but it's not a good currency because I can't buy coffee with it, I can't buy things online with it, and it's too, it's too volatile. And they think that's a criticism. Bitcoin may start to lose its reputation as a volatile asset. According to Bidwise Asset Management's Matt Hogan, the cryptocurrency's wild price swings had come down substantially over the past decade. What's driving the Bitcoin market right now is a simple demand supply imbalance. We have this huge new source of demand from these ETF, and we have supply that's inelastic. On January 11, the first Bitcoin exchange traded funds began trading. Since then, the asset is up more than 50%. Bitcoin hit an all-time high this week of just under $74,000. Yet Hogan acknowledges it may not be for everyone. It moves around a lot. Some people find it difficult to understand, Hogan said. Hyman, the firm's global investment strategist, notes Bitcoin's historic strength has been going on a lot longer than the launch of the spot Bitcoin ETF. This is the month of the anniversary of the collapse of crypto-linked financial institutions. Last year, Bitcoin was going up then too, Iman said, I think there are longer term folks who are starting to come in for asset allocation and diversification purposes. So a lot of people are criticizing it for the wrong reason. 
a lot of people misunderstand it, you know, and and that creates lots of chaos, misinformation, stupid, you know, stupid, misleading stories in mainstream media. It creates uh, it creates like bad takes on Twitter. It creates all sorts of confusion amongst Wall Street analysts. And so all of that fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and just basic confusion, and then misunderstanding, it, that causes uh, a slow growth in demand, right? Like demand is growing, but imagine how much faster it would be growing if everybody un had spent 100 hours, right? Right, the people that criticize it, there's no way Warren Buffett spent a hundred hours studying Bitcoin, right? There's no, there's not likely that everyone that criticizes it spent a hundred hours studying it. They haven't read the Bitcoin standard. They probably haven't listened to 20, 30, 40 hours of podcasts, right? So the critics are, are misinformed and the mainstream investors, they have all the money. There's $900 trillion of wealth out there. There's only $1 trillion in Bitcoin. So 99.9% .9 of the money of the wealth is not invested, right, in the asset class. So a lot of people that don't understand what this is have a lot of money. And yet we've got a 10-year period when there's going to be an explosive increase in education. But it's not too late to buy it because it's still better to buy the thermodynamically sound digital asset, which doesn't have all of the liabilities of real estate, stocks, or bonds, it's still going to go up in value faster than the S&P index. It's still going to be a better after-tax return than owning sovereign debt. It's still going to be better than owning physical property subject to acts of God, you know, force majeure, and all the other physical limitations. So it's still going to be the best investment. It's just not going to be the investment that got you the 100x return that you were going to brag about. And so there's no reason to worry, right, or fret. You don't want people to figure this out, right? Like like if they figure it out, you won't. You have 10 years during which you can work and you can buy Bitcoin while everybody else disagrees with you and doesn't understand it because they're intellectually lazy or they're a different generation, right? So that... It's like me saying it's 1905 and in 15 years, everybody's going to have an automobile and now you know. Okay, well, you have 15 years to get rich in the automobile business. Figure out, are you going to set up the dealership in New York City? Are you going to start a company? Are you going to be a salesperson? What are you going to do? You have 15 years. Figure it out. This is better than that. After hitting new all-time highs during the week, Bitcoin faced considerable sell-side pressure, with a series of lower lows accompanied by failed rebounds. On the day, offloading continued to gather speed well in advance of the hotly anticipated weekly candle close. Analyzing the situation, popular traders skew outlined zones of interest for bidders on major exchanges. These focused on between $60,000 and $64,000. Majority of the selling has been driven by takers, market selling. Apollo CEO Thomas Farrer commented on the current situation. Waves of liquidity will pour over Bitcoin ETF real capital, hasn't even started allocating resources yet. If a $1 billion hedge fund position caused a 10% drop in BTC, can you imagine what $150 billion from advisors will do to the price? And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Seller. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.